talking about our journey to pregnancy uh, right now we're going through um, fertility treatment well she's going through that but you know together we're dealing with it um, and so far it is it's a journey for sure Costly. It's a costly journey. Unfortunately, my um, insurance does not pay for infertility, so definitely been costly. Yeah, so got to come out of pocket for pretty much almost everything. Every every sonogram that she has to do, I'm not able to. to I'm not able to attend any of the uh, appointments because of COVID. So, um, some of the things that we're going to touch base on today is not things that people really talk about or women talk about, um, could be because it's, you know, embarrassing, um, cause I can definitely understand why it would be something that they're embarrassed about. Um, for some women, um, they're able to get pregnant easily and for some women they're not. And um, a lot of times we don't know or we don't understand why we're not able to. Um, for me, I happen to be one of those women who uh, cannot conceive easily. Um, my cycles are not regular. Um, I have PCOS and that's uh, polycystic syndrome. Oh, polycystic ovary syndrome. I was missing the phone. <laughs> but, um, yeah, this is something that I really don't talk a lot about. Um, I kind of keep it pretty private as far as the PCOS, but really as far as um, infertility. Um, I told my mom about it, my dad, and now Carl's mother knows. Um, but PCOS. Oh, before she starts, uh, I know she kind of briefly mentioned, you know, mid, uh, people don't really talk about it. Uh, it's the biggest reason that she's wanting to do this is because of the fact that it's not being talked about. And for anybody that may uh, need direction, need direction or maybe going through some similar stuff. Um, you have, you know, some information from someone that probably has to go through the same thing that you're going through or, you know, you just, I don't know, learn something new. Yeah. Uh, so some of the information may be, um, it may sound like a little too much depending on who's watching. Uh, some stuff may be a little raw but it's really just me and uh i guess straightforward honest and uh just really putting it out there about you know, this type of situation as far as getting pregnant when you can't do it naturally so to speak yeah i mean because i don't know about y'all but whenever i you know have a symptom for something or whatever the case may be i'm going through something and i'm like trying to figure out what's going on i run straight to google, to google you know so which ain't always the best but yeah that's true that that's very true 
but just to kind of get your mind like to grasp something of what you may be going through or something like that that's kind of why i do it you know because i mean in this situation it's helped me it did tremendously um but well, at least with this situation you can hear it from somebody uh, as opposed to reading it from you know somebody that you can't even see you don't know who's typing it up but at least you can you know if somebody's going through this there's somebody you know actual information that you know we can receive and stuff like that and you can put a face to you know our words and stuff like that yeah but we are nobody in the medical field um yeah so we may you know we mess may, up some words and right. some terms and or some stuff may not make 100% sense just because we're not explaining it because we're not full of understanding stuff like that. Right. You can go ahead and um, so as far as PCOS, that stands for polycystic ovary syndrome. And so the signs and symptoms of, of PCOS include irregular or no menstrual periods, heavy periods, excess body and facial hair, acne, pelvic pain, difficulty getting pregnant, and patches of thick, dark, darker velvety skin um they also mentioned about type 2 diabetes obesity uh sleep apnea heart disease different things like that um not all of those i experienced but i do experience some of those um i do remember that there was one time where i was on my cycle um heavily for 60 plus days you know non-stop and of course that's not regular um then there were times where you know i'd not be on a period for months at a time which of course you're supposed to get one every month um so i knew something was up excuse me um over the years or the reason why i would go to the doctor was because I wasn't getting normal cycles. And um, this has started years ago. And I go, I get checked, they check my thyroid and different things like that. Oh, nothing's wrong. So, okay. And then after a while, I started, you know, questioning, I want to have kids one day. So how is this going to affect me being able to conceive when I'm not getting a period the way that I'm supposed to and when my period's, you know, lasting um, way too long. And the doctors would just tell me at that time that they'll ask me, you know, are you trying to conceive right now? And at that time we weren't, so I tell them no. And they say, well, we'll worry about that, you know, when that time comes, just, you know, set up an appointment when that time comes and we'll go from there. Um, got told that a couple different times and um, finally now that we are trying to conceive um, I saw my OBGYN for that and um, he helped me out a little bit but then eventually he told me hey I want you to see a specialist um, so he sent me to a endometriologist I don't want to I'm sorry mm -hmm. endocrinologist and um so that's what i'm seeing currently now i've had five appointments so far i started june 16th of this year and um june 16th was my consultation and they basically just go over with you you know ask basically your questionnaire they ask you questions about what's going on with you and, um, you know, your past, your history, whatever. Um, and kind of your expectations out of the whole treatment and things like that and the route that you're wanting to take and answer any questions that you have. Then July 1st, I had a baseline ultrasound. Um, this is some of my paperwork from that. So the baseline ultrasound is a sonogram that is performed on day one through five of your cycle. This test counts how many small 
antral follicles are on each ovary. And they also do it um, before any treatment cycle to rule out any cysts that you may have on your ovaries. So um, got past that, I didn't have any cysts on my ovaries despite me having PCOS. Um, and then July 9th, you know, they actually prescribed me Prevera, which um, is a pill that I had to take for 10 days. And that jump starts my period about um, seven to 10 days. Well, I won't say seven to 10. Anywhere between one and 10 days of you finishing that 10 day cycle of taking the um, pills. I started mine about three to four days after. Um, and then you have to go to another um, appointment. I'm trying to see. Oh, the HSG, which that is the dye test. Uh, the dye test is perform performed after your period ends and before ovulation usually done day seven through 12 to confirm the tubal patency and assess for abnormalities of the uterus and the tubes. So they push up the dye or you lay on the table, whatever, and then they put the dye in you to see if it floats to your fallopian tubes. And, um, that's to see if your fallopian tubes are blocked, because if they are, and that's a whole other issue, and you have to take a whole other route for that. Luckily, I did not get to see that part of it, so, um, but yeah, I don't, I don't have any additional information for that specific part. Um, then July 27th, which this is now the fourth appointment. I went for a another baseline ultrasound, which as I mentioned, that's something that you have to get done um, twice because the first time is when they um, count how many follicles you have on your ovaries. And then the second time is also to uh, rule out any cysts that you may have. So, you know, say for instance, we, um, we've already started treatment, but say this round of treatment doesn't work, then we'll have to do another round of treatment. But before starting that treatment, then we'll then have to do another, um, I'll have to do another baseline sonogram. Um, and backing up a little bit to the HSG, the dye test, it, it definitely did hurt a little bit when they did it. They do advise to take like some relief ibuprofen or something. Um, but when they push it, and I don't know, it's just it hurt. It, it definitely hurt. It's it's kind of similar to a pap smear, but to me it's worse. Um. So yeah, and then let's see. 27. I want to say I started my I did so between July 9th and July 27th I had started taking my um, I started taking Clomid that was the treatment that they put me on um, it was 100 milligrams and I started that I had my period July 24th, and so I was on it for six days. So on the fifth day, one, two, three, four, five, so the 28th, I believe, the 28th of July is when I started Clomid, and I had to take it for five days. Um, I stopped taking it on the 1st of August, and then I had an appointment on August 3rd. That appointment was supposed to be to tell me when I was going to ovulate. 
Now, when I went back, they told me that the follicles weren't big enough. So my follicles did not, my ovaries did not respond the way that it should have to the clothing, which it happens. Um, so I spoke to the doctor, we decided that we were gonna try another treatment called uh, letrozole. And that's also something that works really well for people who have, or women that have PCOS. Um, so I don't have another appointment until the 11th, I believe. Yes, which is this upcoming Tuesday, so in a couple days. And that's when they'll let me know if my ovaries did what it was supposed to do. And, um, and then yeah, and then we can just make it do what it do and hopefully we pray that it works. But um, so far, like I said, that would be, I have five appointments so far and I have another one scheduled. So that'll be six appointments that I have. All having to pay out of pocket. Um, Clomid wasn't expensive. I wanna say it was like 10 or $11. Um, the letrozole, for whatever reason, I didn't have to pay for that. Um, the Provera to jumpstart my period, that wasn't, that wasn't expensive either. I think it's maybe like $3 or something. Um, I did have to get my blood drawn. And that's basically for a genetic test. Um, they ran a whole bunch of tests. And... My blood work came back with hypo, hypoglycemia or something like that. And basically the genetic test is for, it, it's basically to see if you have anything that you can pass down to your child. And um, so got that done, that came back and then. Uh, and then <clears throat> as far as males, I mean, we play a small part of this as well uh or at least we can i had to get my blood drawn as well um which i'm still waiting on my results i haven't gotten anything back yet and then um uh i had to do a sperm analysis so i had to go to the vip room that's what they call it um in the vip room you have uh big brown chair it's a comfy chair sitting oh, right next comfy. huh it was comfy well, i'm i'm saying it look comfy uh, uh but yeah big brown comfy chair right next to um toilet and right <laughs> across the way <laughs> right across the way is a tv with your selection of you know uh Yeah, things to get you right. And, um, uh, I mean, it's no different than, uh, well, yeah. It's similar to peeing in the cup, of course, because we're not peeing <laughs> here. You know, you know, you're ejaculating into a cup. And uh, you have the doctor. Well, you don't even see the doctor. Put it between this, or well, this is my experience. I don't know what other. Uh, from my experience, I had to put it like in this little um, metal container door type deal, so I didn't even get the, you know, I didn't see make eye contact with the doctor. Um, and on my end, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> um, I forgot to tell y'all too that in the beginning, I did have to take a pregnancy test. Um, they did it. They now that I remember, they actually did give me a pregnancy test. I don't remember when, um, but they did uh, uh, sample my pee for a pregnancy test at some point. But before I started the process, they made sure they had me take a home pregnancy test to make sure that I wasn't pregnant before we got started on everything. Because going through some of this stuff that can actually. Uh, I don't know a better way of saying it, but it could, it could kill your unborn. So, yeah. Um, I 
also have an injection that I have to take. Um, I wasn't told that I have to take injections like on top of the pills that they give me, but I guess this is probably gonna be to jumpstart my ovulation. Um, I don't really know that yet. I'm gonna ask them about it um, Tuesday. Cause that's when they'll tell me when I have to use it anyway. But yeah, I mean, my appointments have been two and three something. I don't think I ever had an appointment that was 100. I guess I did, I had a couple. And then, on the 9th of July is when they gave me a urine pregnancy test. So. Yeah, I mean, spent quite a bit so far. Over a thousand dollars. So, and it's, you know, we're definitely hopeful that we only have to do this one round. Technically, it would be two rounds since started out with COVID and now I'm doing much of all. We're definitely hopeful that after this round, we can just be pregnant. Because um, like I said, it, it's very expensive and it can be stressful, um, but it is in the mother's, I mean, of course, both parties, but it's in the mother's best interest or the to-be mother. Um, to not stress because you know that it, it doesn't make the situation any easier for you you know so I've been trying not to stress about it um, overall we've started our journey I'd say in maybe April that's when we decided we would start trying to have a child um, they do like for you to be then um, started trying to have a child like six months prior to you seeing a specialist. Um, but with everything that's been going on with my body, I'm like, no, we're not doing this. I've had too many issues with my menstrual cycle. We're not about to prolong this. Y'all need to do something. So, um, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think what else I could tell you guys. Um, a suggestion, a few suggestions that I would give is um, when you and your partner are trying to, you know, y'all taking care of y'all business don't make it be like a chore and overall what i'm saying is enjoy it like don't stress out about it um because when you get on your partner about it that doesn't turn out well and then of course you as the woman stressing out about it it doesn't turn out well for you either um Yeah, that, that's, that's it. I mean, if you have any kind of questions or concerns and stuff like that, don't be afraid to talk about it, you know, with somebody because I guarantee you we're not the only one that's going through this type of stuff. So, you know, see your primary care physician about it, see a specialist, you know, talk to a close loved one, anything you know at least just try to get some kind of direction of you know where you should go how you should start out getting the help that you need and this concludes uh part one of the journey to pregnancy and we thank y'all for watching <laughs>